folks, I'm Tom Vassell. Welcome back to Best of Publishers. Today we're taking a look at AEG, Alderic Entertainment Group, but everyone calls them AEG. Now AEG has morphed over the years. Originally they were much more into, well, L5R, which was a collectible card game, which they have incidentally since sold to Fantasy Flight. Uh, but they, they also did some RPGs. I still remember playing The World's Largest Dungeon, which was a source book that AEG put out. But several years ago, AEG decided to dabble into board games, and it was a very mixed thing. They did Tomb, which got pretty much negative reviews across the board, and they published some other board games, some that were really bad and others that were good, and good enough that they just kept putting effort into it and effort into it and effort into it until board games took over the company and the company is pretty much all about board and card games these days. Um, I'm going to share my top 10 games from them with you, uh, but they, I have to mention a couple things first. I already mentioned L5R. That was a defining moment of them, but they also have had other uh, collectible card games, LCGs. They, they took Doomtown. And, and, and that was originally a uh, collectible card game and now a living card game. And so that they, they have a lot of effort mixing and working with cards. But the one defining game that's really catapulted them to fame, well, there's two, but one of them is Love Letter. Now, Love Letter is not my top ten. I think it's a fine game, a great micro game. I remember the first time I played it, I wanted to play it over and over and over again. It's a fascinating game, and they have made many, many versions of it. You know, every company gets this evergreen, a game that keeps selling or you hope to get one anyway. AEG's is Love Letter. They've made multiple versions, Batman and Adventure Time and a wedding version and the classic original Japanese version. There's just multiple versions of Love Letter and it, I don't know when that will ever stop. And it certainly blew up the micro game craze. Many people tried to copy it, but no game has had the success of Love Letter. But that's not my top 10 games. Here they are. Number 10 for me is Automobiles. Now, Automobiles is the third in a trilogy that they did. They did trains, planes, and automobiles, right, for the movie. Planes was not a very good game, so I, I came into Automobiles a little concerned. Then I found out that it was a pool-building game in a bag where you were putting cubes into a bag, and these cubes represented different gears and different ways that your car moved, and then you would move around a track by pulling cubes out and using them to move on a track. It's a really good concept. Um, it's, it's fairly basic, but it takes racing in a direction that I haven't seen before. A really fun, enjoyable game. Number nine is Dice City. Really a big fan of this one, uh, where you have, each person has a grid in front of them, and you are rolling dice and placing the dice in the right spot on that grid. And each place you put them will give you resources, but you then use cards to put them on the grid. So this is a grid building game. There's multiple expansions for this game. Uh, they add some more resources. It basically keeps the same basic premise where you roll dice, move them, use the dice to get resources or to manipulate other dice, and then buy cooler, upgraded buildings. This is one that I'm surprised doesn't get more buzz. It's so simple to get into, so easy. Highly recommend it. Then number eight, we have Istanbul. Was once Constantinople. Why did it change? I don't know. Um, Istanbul was the Kennerspiel winner. Uh, originally came from Pegasus. AEG brought it to America. And wow, you got to give this one props. I mean, essentially, it's kind of a race game as you're racing around trying to do different things. But it's uh, pick up and delivery. Go over here and sell this stuff for money. And because the board is maneuverable, the board's going to change each time. You have to figure out just the best way and the most efficient way to move around as you go to different spots on the board. The expansion adds even more of that to the game. Uh, the, the theme is not really that strong, but it's also not weak either. It kind of all comes together Really well done, Istanbul. Number seven is the Valley of the Kings. Now, there are three different versions of the Valley of the Kings. They're pretty much the exact same game with different cards. You can combine them or you just play one of them. The Valley of the Kings is a deck builder, but it's a small deck builder. Most deck builders are big and grandiose. More on this later. But the Valley of the Kings was a small one where there's like a pyramid of cards, and you would buy from the bottom of the pyramid, and cards would come down, and you had these cards that were really good, but you needed to bury these cards to get points, which takes them out of your deck. So you're bringing them in your deck, utilizing them, but at some point you want to get rid of them out of your deck to get points because they won't score unless you do that. So you have a card that's useful, but also a lot of points. You want to get rid of it at the very last second, but you can only get rid of so many cards per turn. Really works well, especially with three players. Trains. I already mentioned automobiles. Planes ain't going to make this list, but trains is my next one. Trains is 
a deck building game that is really close to Dominion. It's as if someone played Dominion and said, I know what, let's add a board. And that's really what Trains is. Uh, it's a deck building game where you're building a uh, thing, but you're also spreading your roots out on this board. There's multiple boards for Trains. Now, I had hoped that Trains would come out with many, many sets. Trains never, when I first played, I said, wow, this, this will easily beat Dominion if they keep coming out with expansions. Well, they came out with one and a half expansions, I think. There's maybe a few more maps. The game did not ever really reach its full potential, but it does have a lot of neat concepts to it. The Trains theme is fun. Um, it, and the board and the cards do work together in a really good way. Number five is Warlord. Now, I talked about AEG with collectible card games, and we mentioned Doomtown and L5R. My personal favorite is Warlord. Now, Warlord is basically taking the D20 system uh, and bringing it into a card game. Now, this is one that not a lot of people talk about, not a lot of people know about. It's certainly out of print, although if you go to conventions and stuff, you might be able to find starter decks of it for pretty inexpensive price. But I still have a whole uh, box of it. In fact, I, I have it right here. See this? Warlord. Uh, used to be Mage Wars, but I moved that to a different box. So Warlord. And in this game, each person has a Warlord. And then you have minions in front of you. And you're all fighting each other back and forth. Usually using a D20 and adding bonuses and weapons. And there's certainly luck with that D20 involved. But this is one of the first games where you have that summoner against another summoner with minions. We got Summoner Wars and Mage Wars and all sorts of games now. Uh, but Warlord was one of the first and still one that I enjoy quite a bit. Number four is Mystic Veil. This card crafting game, deck building, pool building, you know, now we have a card building game. And in this one, there's clear sleeves and you're putting parts of a card into them and upgrading these cards. And you can make one card super powerful or you can have as many cards as you want. The theme is pretty much non-existent. The expansion added just more cards. Uh, but so far, it's still a really neat system. It's still fun as you take these cards and each turn you're going to buy upgrades to your cards and make your cards better, which makes them better for the future round. I like this system. You only have 20 cards and you just keep making them better and better. Definitely worth checking out. Number three is Adventurer's Temple of Shock. Now, this did eventually go to Fantasy Flight Games and now has reverted back to Death Studios, the rights to who has this game now. But... This was in that opening sweep of board games that AEG did. AEG did many different board games, and most of them were bad. But I played Adventures and said, wow, this one is really fun. This is Indiana Jones, Lara Croft in a box as you run from a rolling boulder with walls crushing in and lava pits and darts coming out of walls and a, a rickety bridge. And it's not a perfect game. There are flaws in it, but it's still one that I really enjoy playing. Lots of fun. Adventures, Temple of Shock. Number two is one of the three big games, I think, from AEG. I mentioned one already, which is Love Letter. This one is Smash Up. Smash Up is a deck smashing game or deck shuffling game where you would take two different factions and ghosts, ninjas, robots, dinosaurs, um, and mix those two together to make a deck. And then you would play another person in a fairly basic game where you're adding minions to the board and trying to control locations, send other people's minions back to their hands. But the fun of the game is mixing the different combinations. And then since they continue to put out set after set after set of this, the combinations have just really exploded. And for me, making the combination is half the fun of the game. I might want to have princess ghosts uh, against your ninja uh, transformers or whatever. You know, it just it, there's a lot of fun in this, a lot of in-jokes. Uh, it doesn't play as well with four as I like. I think it's best with three. But definitely want to check up Smash Up. And then finally, my number one is the third big one from this company, and that is Thunderstone. Now, Thunderstone had a first edition, and then Thunderstone Advanced, which was a revised version, although it was backwards compatible. And now this year, they're going to be kickstarting and eventually publishing Thunderstone Quest, which is the third edition. Thunderstone was the first major kick, uh, deck builder to come out after Dominion. And I kind of went into it like, ah, we'll see. And I played it, and it was a decent game. It added a dungeon theme to the game, and it was fine. But as time went by, I was like, well, I, you know, I, I'd rather play Dominion, I think. However, Richard Lawney has showed me an epic variant where you could go through it. It felt much more like a, um, going into a dungeon this way, where you used every card and not just 10 decks of cards. And so much so that when Thunderstone Advance came out, they took this variant, which Richard created, and I modified slightly, 
and put it in the rules and it's the only way I play anymore where every weapon and every character is available in the game and it makes it so much more fun because it doesn't feel so much as a deck builder as in a I'm going to a village and getting weapons and hiring people to go into a dungeon. Lots of fun, definitely one you should check out, Thunderstone. Those are my 10 favorite games from AEG. What are yours? What did I miss? What should I have had on my list? Tell me in the comments below. I'm Tom Vassell, and you've been watching Best of Publishers, AEG. Thanks so much for watching the Dice Tower videos. Find more great videos and reviews, as well as our top-rated audio podcast at Dicetower.com. You can also find other great shows at Dicetowernetwork.com. I'm Eric Summerer, and you've been watching The Dice Tower. The Dice Tower is sponsored by Cool Stuff, Inc., where you can find great games for great prices. Cool Stuff, in stock. Check them out at CoolStuffInc.com.